In this video, we'll be discussing human genetic disorders. Gregor Mendel's principles apply to the inheritance. of many human traits. Things such as having freckles or no freckles, having a widow's peak versus a straight hairline, free earlobes versus attached earlobes. Now we wouldn't call these disorders, these are just variations within the human population. But there are genetic disorders that also follow these inheritance patterns. Many human traits show these simple inheritance patterns. These traits are controlled by genes on the autosomes, or non-sex chromosomes. Humans have 46 chromosomes, found in 23 pairs of chromosomes. Autosomes in humans are the 22 pairs of non-sex chromosomes. Most human genetic disorders are recessive. meaning that individuals can be carriers of these diseases. A carrier of a recessive disorder will have one of the disease alleles, but will not show that disease trait. The carrier will always be heterozygous. And often these carriers will have no idea that they are carriers for this genetic disorder. Now genetic diseases are different than other types of diseases in that genetic diseases are not contagious. They can't be passed by one person to someone else, but the disease alleles may end up being received by the offspring and it will be the offspring if they receive the disease allele from both parents who may end up having that trait. So here we're looking at a particular case of genetically caused deafness, and it's caused by a recessive allele. Both of the parents are heterozygous, yet they have normal hearing. When we look at the possible offspring from this cross, it's possible that they will have a child with normal hearing, just like the parents. But if that child receives the recessive allele from both parents, they then will be deaf. Now, not all human genetic disorders are recessive. Some human genetic disorders are dominant. Achondroplasia is an example of this. Achondroplasia is a form of dwarfism. Polydactylism is another dominant genetic disorder. Polydactylism is having additional digits, extra fingers or toes, so more than 10. Even though both of these genetic disorders are dominant, it doesn't mean they are common. And that's an important concept to realize. Just because an allele is dominant doesn't mean it's common. Now, for a dominant genetic disorder, it is impossible to be a carrier. Because if an individual has even one of the disease-causing alleles, they will show that trait. And here we see an image of a therapeutic surgeon who has a chondroplasia, and he specializes in surgeries to deal with some of the consequences of this genetic condition. If a dominant disorder is lethal, and it, it is expressed early in life, that organism is not likely to survive to pass it on to the next generation because they won't have offspring at all. The disease will only be caused by new mutations. Only if the disorder is expressed late in life will that individual survive to have offspring. And this is the case with Huntington's disease and certain forms of Alzheimer's where it is a lethal autosomal dominant disease which expresses their symptoms late in life. 
Now I'd like to spend some time talking about the sex chromosomes. They determine the inheritance of certain traits. They are designated as X and Y. In humans and most other mammals and a few other types of animals as well. And they typically define an individual's anatomical sex. As mentioned in the previous video, there is a recognition of exceptions and differences, and things aren't always as simple as presented in this introductory lecture. When it comes to anatomical sex determination, males are the heterogametic sex. In that, males produce two different types of gametes. They are both sperm cells, but they're either sperm cells with an X or a sperm cell with a Y chromosome. And depending on which sperm cell fertilizes the egg, the offspring will either be anatomically male or anatomically female. It turns out that there are several genes on the X chromosome, and many of them have nothing to do with anatomical sex. So we call these X-linked genes. They are any genes located on the X chromosome. And as I had mentioned, majority of these have nothing to do with anatomical sex, orientation, or gender. Males have only one X chromosome. And so if a mother is heterozygous for an X-linked gene, then 50% of sons from carrier mothers are expected to be affected. Females rarely get these diseases because they must receive two affected X chromosomes, one from each parent. And this would also mean that the father would have to be affected by this disorder and the mother would have to at least be a carrier. So there are a number of human conditions which result from X-linked or sex-linked genes. Red-green colorblindness is an example. It is characterized by a malfunctioning of light-sensitive cells in the eyes. Hemophilia is another. Hemophilia is a blood clotting disease. The mutation that causes hemophilia occurs on the X chromosome, and it is recessive in females. Here we can see a family pedigree of Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, and we see that his son Alexis had hemophilia, and so passed away relatively early in life. Tsar Nicholas did not have hemophilia, and so we have to follow this path back, and we can see several generations this allele was carried within females of the family, and they did not have the disease. So only once a male inherited that affected X chromosome did those symptoms show up. In our next module, we'll be learning about how DNA can act as the genetic material.